Hello everyone. This is going to finally be the QSprite editor tutorial that I've been promising. Um, first thing, we'll start off with a new project. I've got one created, got a couple of my sprite sheets created in it. So first thing I have to do is come into the load and pull up my game project, my RPG Maker project in the editor. You'll see it starts off blank for a new one. So first thing I have to do is I have to create a new animation sheet. I'm going to name this one Hero. This is going to kind of match to what I've done in the tutorials where if I name a um, character Q underscore Hero, it'll use this animation sheet. Now the Q underscore is part of the config, so I don't want it in here. Then I'm going to select one of my characters from the game so that I can use them as a template. Um, pull her in. And you'll see here I've got a fairly large character sheet here. I think I've got 16 different animations in it. But right now it's showing it all as one character frame. I've actually got to go in and figure out how many columns, how many rows are in this sheet. Now I happen to know that this one is 32. And two sets of animations of eight is going to be a 16. And you'll see it's broken now the character in two different frames. This is actually good here that it does it by frames and not by pixel sizes. So I've got this character, standard RPG or PV games character is 160 by 160. If I wanted to use this animation sheet for say the horse, which is 240, you just load the same pattern of animations. Doesn't matter that he's bigger, he's still going to have the same number of frames in the sprite sheet. So the hero will get work for him just as well, even though he's a bigger sprite. And moving on so now that I've got the frames broken up I've got to create poses I'll start off with the first set of animations I've got on here is the idle so I'm going to come in here create a new pose and the QSprite add-on will handle the idle idle animation automatically as long as you name the file this pose as idle and then a number for the direction so idle 2 is the down facing so i'll create an animation idle 2 and i'm just going to click the first three frames you get a kind of a little preview up here idle one doesn't do much and then i'll create another pose for the left facing it's going to be idle 4 choose those then i'll create idle 6 which will be the right facing and new pose idle 8 will be the up facing now I'm using the right mouse button to be able to scroll my preview around it took me a little while to figure that one out um, new poses for the diagonals idle 1 is the first one um, idle three. Now my sheets get a little out of whack here. This is actually idle three, and then idle seven is above it. And then I have idle nine. If you have trouble remembering which direction is which number, all you do is look at the number pad on your keyboard. The keyboard set up um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's the directions that you'll be facing on there. So idle 1, idle 3, no, that's idle 4, idle 7, idle 9, like that. So it makes it easy to figure out which numbers if you lose track. And then I've got some other animations in here, but I want to move on to the other ones that the game uses automatically. I'm going to scroll out a little bit. Now I'll do my movement animation. So when the character is moving at a basic speed, you use move. Again, it'll handle this automatically. So I just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames for the move animation. And you'll see she starts walking. Now on these, you might want to make her walk a little bit faster. Okay, 
that's definitely a little too much. Maybe we'll say eight. A lot of this is personal preference. If you want her to move slower, I can move her at 15. Now her steps get a lot slower. For now, I'm just going to leave them at the default to 10 and create the rest of my movements. Move four. It's starting here. Seven, eight. Then we'll do move six. And move eight. Now I'm not going to go through all of them because it takes a while to create all of these animations. This just gives you the idea. Again, for the move, make sure that you do a lowercase m or it won't recognize the animation. The next set I'll do is the dash animations. These are for when you're doing the dash in the game where you're running. So we'll do a new, create a dash two. With, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that one's looking a little too slow. We need to speed it up. Now nah, she looks a little bit more like she's actually dashing. So I think that's good. So I'm going to create new dash four. Make sure we set the speed the same for all of them. So let's see here. Oh, that hit one wrong. Delete that one since I lost track of where I was. I'll clean these out and just redo it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, I'm not going to go through every animation because it takes forever. There is a lot of work to setting this up, but it is worth it. Now I'm going to do the kneeling animations. Now once you start using all these others, you'll have to use plug-in commands to activate the animations. So I'm just going to call this one kneel. It's only a two-frame animation. Yeah, that's a kneel too because it's front facing. Don't forget that part. So since she starts at idle, I didn't really feel like I needed the first standing animation. I just go straight into the kneel. But I also create an unkneel. So instead of popping from kneeling back to standing straight up, she will actually do an unkneel. And I just play the same animation in reverse. So first one kneels down. A kneel stands back up. I can do the same thing over type thing over here with my mining. So I do a new we'll call this mine two and I start raise up oh, wrong one. It actually starts here, lifts it, swings down, and then brings it back up. And then you'll end up, if you want to replay the animation again, it'll come back to here and start the loop again. So instead of just popping back to the end, it actually raises back. So you can do a lot more than just playing the animation straight through. Now I'm not going to go any further with this one. Hero Sprite Sheets, like I said, had a lot of images in them. Most NPCs, monsters, you need idle, walk, maybe you need a little behavior. For those, I'm going to create a second configuration. Again, I just hit new, get a new config, call this one basic. And so when I choose my character, I'll choose one of my enemy characters. It's a, um, and my game just locked up. Let's try that again. We'll create basic. I don't know how I did that. For some reason, it didn't. It opened the file, but didn't close the window. There we go. So now I've got my little basic monster. He's got his idle. He's got his walk animation. Then he's got a little behavior where he's kneeling down. So really, I just start the same process over again. Don't forget to set. See here, he's got one frame animation. So you can't forget under the config. To say that he has 14 columns, and 8 rows, so now he's got all his little frames. Now he's not the whole sheet of character. 
So I can make this his idle too. Uh, give him his idles. I'll create his move too. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to create a behavior. I'll just call this action two for when he's kneeling down. And just like before, you'll go through, you'll create all your different directions. Whenever you name your character as Q, under, Q underscore basic and whatever his name is, it'll use this animation setting instead. And that's all there is to Q Sprite Editor. Make sure you save it. Um, one other thing I will throw in, because I did try this at one point. There's not really a lot of point in doing a duplicate to try and save your animations unless you have the exact same sprite sheet because when you change to a different character sheet, all your frame numbers change and so all your animations you built before aren't useful. So unfortunately that doesn't help much. I'm going to just delete that one back out, save this to my project. And I hope this helps.